On this week's episode, we're in for a treat. After my fantastic trip to Dingle with Michael and Maz and Nigel, myself and Michael had a day to spare, and we decided that we would head to one of my favourite places to take some photographs, and that is the stunning Copper Coast in Waterford. However, on this episode, we're going to do something completely different. Michael has a fantastic eye for finding the abstract in a bigger scene. So I decided to take the opportunity to pick his brain and give you guys an opportunity to see just how he goes about finding those fantastic shots. So let's join us and see, and hopefully we'll learn a thing or three. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, I'm in the beautiful county of Waterford. Now, after my epic trip to Dingle and with those incredible storms, I'm now in Waterford. And I decided to bring one of my colleagues that was here with me for those epic uh, conditions, which is this guy here, which is Michael Shane Bloom. So uh, I'm bringing him here to give him a look at this coastline. As you'll know, if you watch this channel, we, there are some incredible sea stacks along here. Now we're here for um, one evening. It is low tide at the moment, but we're waiting now for the tide to come in. And hopefully it will give us some nice movement in the water as it comes over these stacks. Forecast for sunset, which is what we're ultimately here for. It is kind of a mixed bag right now. It might work, it may not work, but I do think that we will get some shots. So today I'm going to be shooting seascapes with Shane Bloom. Let's go. One of the things that Michael is very, very good at is finding some details in a bigger scene and finding some kind of intimate details or abstract details. And at the moment now, uh, Michael is looking at some very nice shapes here in the sand. So let's have a quick chat with him here and see what he's thinking about. So Michael, what are you looking for and what are you seeing? Um, I like the sand. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see, what, what, what can we say about the sand? Well. It's low tide right now, so you know the water has receded, and it's revealed all these cool, you know, shapes and lines and textures. And depending on what the light is doing, um, you know, if the sun is shining on them or if it's more uh, overcast, the lighting here changes, the density changes, and the colors kind of shift as well. So, just a good opportunity to play around with some ab abstract patterns, and um, I guess these are scenes that, that I really like to capture because, you know, there's so many different opportunities for, um, you know, playing around with, with, with really interesting shapes. And the more you move around here and the more you look at these different patterns, they shift and change and the textures change and uh, the size of them changes. The light is coming out now. So right now they look way different than they did like two seconds ago. Um, so for me, it's a, a really great way to express a, a bit of creativity and, um, you know, I might switch to wide angle stuff a little later on, but uh, this is something I like to do on every trip because it's, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I just find it to be fun. So that's kind of the reason I do it. <laughs> So I think that's quite interesting actually just to listen to Michael there in regards to his approach and you know what he finds on the floor. I think maybe I'll give it a go also. So I'll kind of follow suit here but not in the same footprints obviously but I'll try and find my own unique patterns and shapes in the sand. Now it's something I did actually up in Clare a number of months back but here in Waterford right now there are some really really nice textures on these. Totally different to what I would have had in Clare because it was black against the golden sand so here now it's more about the different shapes that are there with the water as it flows out so yeah let's see how I get on I've taken a couple of different shots actually there now just walking away over along the beach and I found some interesting shapes uh, in the sand some caused by water as it flows out 
others as well kind of different undulations in between rock pools and then it was also seems like there was a horse uh, on the beach earlier so there's a lot of uh, hoof prints and what they're doing is creating divots in the sand but as the water is coming in as well then it's kind of going over the top of those so I think they might be nice shots too but something I'm not sure of is should I shoot these in this light with or without my polarizer now with my sunglasses on here they're polarized so I can see it some way but I'm taking those off obviously in regards to taking the shot so maybe we'll go and ask uh, Michael should we have a polarizer on our lens and if so why yes or why no uh, Michael um, when I'm taking my shots I'm wearing my glasses and then I'm taking them off to take my shot but I notice the difference with the polarizer in the glasses versus the shot so for these types of shots should I have a polarizer on my lens or shouldn't I really depends on what you're after okay so you know you don't it's not a yes or no answer it's it's really basically just understanding what a polarizer does right so a polarizer is going to cut out reflected light and so right now we've got the sun hitting the water right and the yep. water makes a reflection so you have to ask yourself is the lighting uh, are those bits of reflected light, like the sun hitting the sheen of the sand, is that making the shot interesting? And if you're shooting the water, is the water surface, the reflection, interesting? Or do you want to cut through that? Are you trying to cut out the reflection? Is the reflection distracting? Or is it a part of the photograph? Is the sheen off the sand um, an interesting element, or is it distracting? And if you can answer that question, then you'll have the answer of whether or not you need the polarizer. And if you're not sure, you just put it on your camera, twist it, and, and take two shots, and see which one has the elements that you're looking for. Like, right now, I'm shooting, and I see this little bit of edge light from the sun, and I think it's really pretty. If I put on my polarizer, twist it, I'm gonna remove that, that bit of sheen off the sand, and it's actually going to uh, take away an element that I liked from the image. But, you know, that's something you have to decide for yourself. That's a top tip there, I think. And you know what, something that's quite valuable to, just depending on the location that you're at. And obviously, as Michael has said there, whether or not you want to have that within your frame. Now, there's no right or wrong in regards to it. It's whatever you prefer. But interestingly enough, when I was taking my shots over there, I liked the fact that I had that glisten. And if I put on the polarizer, I would remove the glisten. So I would remove what I liked about the image. So yeah, that's a good top tip there from Mr. Shamblum. At the edge of a set of rocks here, I found what looks like barnacles or urchins or something like that. And I really liked the textures in the shot. Now, with the sun as well beaming in as it is right now, it was lighting up the top part of the image. And also as well, I think, giving a nice bit of depth and shadow to each of the pockets that are within that. So I took a couple of shots around those anyway. Yeah, we'll see how those turned out. I'll give you a look at those now. Yeah, and we'll continue and see what else we can find.
I've moved over further along the beach and now I'm starting to look at the multitude of rocks that I have around me here before the incoming water reaches them. And I've spotted one here, which I think there is a shot within it. It is a rock that has a number of different layering and levels. There are some um, green algae on it and then there's a piece of seaweed as well that's just sitting there and then acts as a diagonal within the, the frame. Now, I'm not sure if any of these shots will work out, but I'm enjoying, you know, trying to find something intimate or abstract within the plethora of items that I have to choose from here. I'll give you a look at this here now, yeah, and we'll see. Maybe now we'll start looking at some rocks and see if I can find some differences within the image or maybe some story that can be told with different colouring and layering, and the light obviously then can be a lot to do with that also. Now that I've ventured over towards the rock area, it actually is opening up a whole different world of compositions and also challenges. So with the sand earlier on, I was getting minute details formed by the water, but now I'm getting textures and kind of recurring patterns within the rocks. And that's what I'm looking for mainly. Now I'm also looking for something that kind of holds it all together. Some of the rocks have some nice colors interspersed with them, but right now, as you can probably see by my face, the sun is in full blast so it is making it a bit of a challenge but it's also giving me higher or highlighted areas and darker areas so hopefully i'll be able to do something with those uh, in post i'm not quite sure like i say it's not something i do that often but because i was with here with michael i said i'd give it a go and it is fun and it is amazing to kind of see the things that we take for granted as seascape photographers that we walk over all the time when we're looking towards the waves so uh, i hope you enjoyed coming along and enjoyed the very very quick uh episode I suppose really or even what we've been doing here just to play around at your feet and see what's there and shooting uh, intimate seascapes with Michael Shane Bloom. Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schnongefall. Mm -hmm.